What a waste of time. What am I thinking with all these old systems and video games? Yeah, something somewhat current. <sighs> Red flashing lights? Where have I seen this before? So... Processor got so hot that it desoldered itself. Why would it do that? So in a nutshell, I just have to get inside and replace the heat sink mounts. Um, there are no screw holes in this thing. Huh, must be toolless. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, buy an Xbox disassembly tool. $10? Get it. I'm just gonna play some Wii. Let's kill some zombies. What am I blind? Why am I dying? Hang on a second. D-K-N-T-W-U-L-J-S-P-X-V-M-R Come on! I I'm aiming right at him! I'm shooting you in your stupid looking little face! Alright, all right, hold on a second. What the? The laser pointer's a good six inches off of the pointer on this thing. I'm dead? Oh, forget this. <sighs> so this is the new generation of consoles, huh? What a bunch of crap. I wonder. Yeah. get some of these old games out, clean them up, and start playing them. So you've cleaned out your old Nintendo Entertainment System, and still, you can't get your favorite game to work. Well, you could try this. Right? I mean, that was the trick that we all did when we were kids, but uh, more than likely, the thing that was actually solving the problem was seeding the game in and out over and over and over again. Perhaps the moisture from your breath was able to help with some of that metal-on-metal metal conduction. Think about it, after a while, that moisture is going to evaporate, and then what's going to happen to the game? The real problem is that your game is dirty, and there are two approaches that I like to take when I encounter a dirty game. First, grab yourself some isopropyl and a cotton swab. 
Get your cotton swab wet with some of the isopropyl and rub the contacts back and forth, top and bottom. If your game isn't that dirty, this is all it will take to get you playing. While this first approach is very easy, it's not very effective on those games that you get from the garage sales or from wholesale lots. Most of those games have been improperly stored or, in the case of those wholesale lots, moved from, from lot to lot basically because nobody's ever been able to get the game working. That's okay though. I don't mind those wholesale games. There has yet to be a game that I couldn't get working with a little bit of cleaning. What we're going to do is take your game thoroughly apart and clean it. Let's talk about the tools you'll be using. First, some isopropyl alcohol. Second, a cotton swab. Third, an eraser. Fourth, a magic eraser. Fifth, some 800 grit sandpaper. Most of this stuff you can get around the house, but here's the tricky part, the screwdriver bit. For old games like this five screw version of Excitebike, any sort of flathead screwdriver bit will work just fine. I got this little guy at a trade show and it works perfectly. Unfortunately, most games contain security screws, which you will need to get past. What I want to know is what were they trying to secure against? What's in here that's so valuable? The best that I can come up with was way back in the day, say 1987, somebody figured out that some kid at some video rental store was taking these things apart and swapping out the guts. I mean, imagine you take your Super Mario Brothers that you've been playing and playing, you go to the video store and you put a copy of Metroid in there and then you beat Metroid and then you go back and you put Zelda in there and the list goes on and on and on. It's the only thing I can figure out, but were we really that smart back then? Well, maybe. Anyway, you have three options to get past the security screws. The first, you can either smash this thing apart or rip apart this part in here that holds the cartridge together. I don't really recommend that technique. Or you can find yourself a flathead screwdriver bit and using a Dremel, you can make yourself a little tiny two-pronged fork. The security screw is basically designed like a six-pointed star where every point is one of these divots in which one of these prongs could go in. Finally, if you plan on cleaning a lot of games, I suggest you get yourself one of these. This is a security screw bit, and they typically come from China, cost about $8, and take a week or two to be delivered. But you can tear through games like nothing with this thing, much better than the homemade screwdriver bit that you made with your Dremel. These older ones have five screws, and the rest have three with two top clips. Two top clips? Honestly, what are they saving here? Two screws? I think these clips actually make the whole package look worse. Look, clean spine, one line. Clippy spine, contraption-y look. Let's take the back of a game off. If you lift carefully, you can leave the screws in the screw hole. I find the size of the cartridge very interesting. Look at this little thing. Sure, they decided to save money on screws, but apparently the plastic budget was through the roof. Now, I always assume that the cartridge was made this size to house complex games, or multi-game packs. For example, I thought that there would be three of these chips in a cartridge for Super Mario Bros., Duck Hunt, and World Class Track Meet. Nope, just one. Well, there are some games that take advantage of the extra space, but not even half the extra space. Now, take the guts out. Look at the contacts. No way is some Windex on a cotton swab going to do anything about this. Grab your isopropyl, grab your cotton swab. It's time to start cleaning. First, rub the isopropyl all along the contacts. There's no need to be stingy with the isopropyl here. Now, take your eraser and erase those contacts. So at this point, take your magic eraser and rub back and forth against the contacts and the remaining isopropyl that's there. Take your 800 grit sandpaper and rub back and forth, I would say a full three times. One, two, three. Now take a paper towel and rub away the debris. Typically one side will be worse than the other side, so just go ahead and uh, do the same thing again on the other side. Mm -hmm. 
This cartridge is probably not going to give you any more trouble for the next 30 years. When you screw the security screws back together, careful not to over tighten. I would suggest just screwing it in until it just barely catches. You certainly don't want the game to be loose, but on the other hand, you don't want to strip out the screws. Now let's try taking apart a game with my homemade tool. Now what you can actually see here is as I screwed this one back together, I got some of that screw hole come off of my fingers. So we've learned how to take a game apart and clean off the contacts. Functionally you should be set, but what about going that extra mile and really making your collection stand out? Now I'm going to show you how to cosmetically clean up your games. We can actually do quite a bit to remove years of pen, food, stickers rental stickers. The first game I'm going to clean is Wrestlemania. This game has a coating of funk on it. All I'm going to do here is use some isopropyl and a paper towel to clean up the back. The front cover is dusty and has some ancient soda or who knows what. Again, I'm just going to use some isopropyl and a paper towel to clean this up. Isopropyl is a mild solvent which gets a lot of this stuff off fairly easy without the harshness of a goof off or a goo gone. Now I'll wipe away the alcohol and you can see that I got some of the luster back in the game label. And that old soda? It's gone. I now have a game worthy of my shelf. Too bad it's such a terrible, terrible game. Next up I have Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt. This game is also disgustingly filthy. The difference here is that whatever this gunk is, it's lodged in these crevices. So I'm going to use some isopropyl and a cotton swab to clean this up. I'm also going to polish up the label with some isopropyl in my paper towel, for completeness sake. Now this cartridge looks practically new. This is one of my favorite games, Super Mario Bros. 2. It looks like someone has drawn under the label with a crayon or something. I'm not sure what it is, but my isopropyl and paper towel, they're not working. I'm going to step up my game here a little bit and use my magic eraser with some water. I use a circular motion to try to work into the game's texture. With a little patience, whatever this is, it does come off. Someone named Keith wrote their name on this Zelda label. I'll use a cotton swab and some isopropyl to work on this. The actual label itself has a plastic film over it, so as long as I'm careful, I don't run the risk of ruining it. This particular magic marker is proving difficult to remove. So I've worked at it for a few minutes and it's fading, but in order to get it all off, I'm going to need some isopropyl in my magic eraser. Go easy on the magic eraser. Essentially, it is a couple thousand grit sandpaper and will wear through the plastic film and damage my label. One more quick issue I can fix with this game, it has a slight rattle. So what I like to do is take the game apart and inspect the inside. If everything looks okay, I'll put the whole thing back together and now, no more rattle. Mr. Keefe is struck again, not once but twice. If I ever find Mr. Keefe, I'll ask him why he was so possessive of his games. Twice? Really? Well, I've shown you how to deal with the back label. A little isopropyl, a cotton swab, and if need be, a magic eraser. Now that I've taken care of the back label, I will move on to cleaning the plastic. Some magic markers will come right off with this combination. However, in this case, I'm having trouble getting the marker off the plastic, so I'm going to use some Goo Gone. This stuff smells like horrible chemicals mixed with an orange. If you're using Goo Gone, make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. I've put some Goo Gone in a paper towel, and I will rub away at that marker. After a few seconds, the marker is starting to break down. I'm going to repeat this until it's either gone or it seems like it isn't working anymore. In this case, I'll have to use a magic eraser to finish up.
This mangled copy of Dino Wars has a rental number painted on the side. This will come off with some isopropyl and a paper towel. On the other side is old soda or something. I'll hit this with a magic eraser. In just a few moments, the paint and soda is removed. However, the work may not have been worth it based on the quality of this game. This copy of Round Ball has a price tag on the back that somebody tried to pick off. To remove this, I'll use some Goo Gone and a paper towel. Blot the Goo Gone on the label so that it'll soak up a bit. After a few moments, you can use your fingernail to get the majority of the label off. After that, use a paper towel with some Goo Gone to clean up the rest. The front of this game is a little dirty too, so I'll use my isopropyl and a paper towel to clean that up. This copy of Robocop used to be a rental. This gray crud on the side used to be the store's name and phone number or just a general security sticker to prevent people from opening up the game. Somewhere along the line, someone peeled off the reflective part of the sticker but left the sticky part behind. For this, I'm going to use some Goo Gone. As you can see, it is coming right off. So aside from it looking like someone set this side on fire, I have most of this side cleaned up. In order to get it all off, I have to mix it up. Goo gone, paper towel, fingernail, screwdriver for that fine groove, whatever works. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side, except now I have to be careful of the game label. If I work the goo gone too closely to this label, or on the label, it will start to peel away. Finally, I'm going to gloss up this label with a little isopropyl and my paper towel. You know, I never did get to play any Ghostbusters. I'm told the Nintendo version kind of sucks. Maybe I'll try this one.